to the people of this country. The roar you hear is the sound of hope. The sound of Rhodes Enterprises Experimental Aircraft 109. The sound of its crucial maiden flight. A flight piloted by Fred Norwood, one of our most capable test pilots. A flight that could signal the beginning of a billion dollar Air Force contract. In fact, the Air Force insignia is already on the plane in confident anticipation of Air Force approval. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rhodes, please, a few questions. I'm sorry, I'm late now. Excuse me, sorry, sir. That was Victor Rhodes, ladies and gentlemen, president of Rhodes Enterprises, the man who spent $250 million developing the X-109. Had a last minute call from the board of directors. How's Norwood doing? He just reached initial test altitude. Chase One, you with him? Chase One, Roger, I see him. Hey, something moving around due north of you. I saw it too. Looked like an aircraft to me. Could be some civilian, of course. Go have a look, Chase One. Roger. Go with Chase One, have you spotted anything? Come in, Chase One. Bring it in. Over. Where in the hell did it go?
tested every ship I've designed. Fred is a reliable pilot. Look at his pulse here. Blood pressure, respiration, skin temperature. That's a profile of a man losing his head. Vic, Vic, you approved him, remember? For the same reason I did, his record. Records don't mean a thing, Tim, when a man panics. Blanchard, where's Norwood? Oh, he's, uh, he's coming, sir. You were up there, what happened? Well, afraid I can't help you, sir. I was uh, looking the other way. What? Well, I was checking out that flash of light we saw. Oh, that? You mean the aircraft off course? Uh, no, sir. It turned out to be sunlight glitting off of a uh, cold air layer or... Uh... Temperature inversion. Just our luck. You had to be chasing a mirage. Well, sir, it gave the impression of a flying object. Yes, yes. Mr. Norwood, what the devil were you doing up there? I was dodging that bogey. Bogey? What bogey? The UFO, the flying saucer. Flying saucer? Well, you heard me up there. I had everything I could do to avoid a collision. A collision? You mean with another aircraft? I suppose you could call it an aircraft. It was flying. This clike, uh, maybe 40 feet in diameter. Shiny, metallic. Well, then, if it was metal, as you say, it appeared on radar. Something that size would have to, yes, sir. McDonald, why haven't we heard about this? Uh, well, sir, all I saw was the 109 and the chase plane until I lost picture due to static. Pete, it had to be there. Now, what I'm going to be honest with you. Indications are you saw a mirage. Sir, this was no mirage. It was real. It was... I don't know what else to call it. It was a flying saucer. No mirage. Real. It was solid metal. The sun glinting off it. The sun glinted off it. Now, just a minute. Blanchard, tell us what you told us a few minutes ago. Fred, that thing I chased, that flash of light, uh, weather people confirm this now. It's due to an inversion layer. Now, Blanchard, tell him what you told us. The sun glinting off the cold air, giving the impression of... Well, uh, Impression of a flying object. Damn it, I can tell illusion from... Can you, Norwood? Maybe down here you can. But up there, in an untried aircraft, in a condition verging on hysteria, that I doubt. On hysteria? Yes, hysteria. Look for yourself. Here it is. Blood pressure soaring. Pulse racing. Evidence, Mr. Norwood. And radar indicates that you were up there all by yourself. Evidence, Mr. Norwood, suggesting that you risk destroying the 109 to avoid collision with a mirage. It may not be the first time it's happened to a pilot, nor the last. But, Mr. Norwood, it's the last time for you in the 109. Tim, we're expected in the boardroom. I'll be there. Buddy, see you around. Dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. Is one of those for me? Madame? How is he? Here you are, Freddie, my boy. A Vetri special, 9-1. Well, cheers, everybody. Sun over the yard arm, first one today and all that. Fred? What? The martini, dear brother. What else? Look, look Fred, if it's just the job... No, it isn't, Joe. You understand. It's a prize. I'm the hot test pilot who panics and has hallucinations. Nobody believes that. Yes, they do. Well, you're my best friend and you're my sister. I can see on your faces you don't believe me. Now, if you two don't believe me, who's going to believe me? Whether we believe you or not, we're still on your side. 
I know that, Joe. And I'm going to take advantage of that. <laughs> so take advantage of anything you say. I saw that laser radar you have. I'd like to have it. Along with the two operators, I'll pay them. I got 18,000 bucks in the bank. Wait, 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 wait. You just lost me. Well, somehow that saucer blacks out normal radio and radar communications. Something like the ionosphere blackout our astronauts go through. You mean to tell me that you think this, this saucer has set up a, an ionized cloud around itself? Yeah, that's what I figured. But your laser radar ought to penetrate it and give us a normal blip. Now, there's a spot on the desert in Nevada where there's practically no air traffic. Now, any blip that does show up should be unusual. I'm going to give myself a fast job like a P-51. I'm going to mount it with cameras. Anything that's moving upstairs, I'll go up and take a look. You want to try and photograph a flying saucer? Is that it? That's it. Hi, uh, Dorothy. Street, Milford. How do you do? How do you do? It's very close in here, isn't it? That's not too bad. I'd forgotten how crowded these things were. How was your flight? Fine, wonderful. Good, good. Huh? What's it all about? It's Norwood, Mr. Petrie. He's so groggy, he's seeing things. He, he tried to land in 70 feet of air the other day. So we figured we'd better call you. The thing is, all of us work in shifts, but Fred, he ain't slept more than two, maybe three hours at a time the whole month. He just keeps going up there, checking out everything on the scope. And today, for instance, a flight of geese, a weather balloon, a couple of false radar returns. He's gone up uh, six times so far, and it's only sundown. You mean to tell me, Hogger, that you can't tell the difference between a flight of geese and an aircraft on that scope? Well, sure I can. But he goes up anyway. Want to see for myself, he says. And zoom, he's off again. it's a bad return? Well, we all looked it over pretty careful. I wouldn't go up for it, but he'll raise the devil if he finds out we missed one. Yeah. Okay, Pete, thanks. I'd, uh, I'd better go up and take a look. What? Fly up there? Why? Look, I, I flew Mustangs all over Korea, remember? Is it really necessary? Yeah, I, I better go. It won't kill me, you know. We got something here, Fred. See, first it's here, then way over here, and nothing flies like that. Hey, remote. I see it. Light. A flashing red light. Hard to make out. It's like the headlight of a car coming at you at night. But it's big. Big, and it's round. I'm going after it. Joe, we read you. Come in, over. Look, I've got two blips. Bogey closing in. Ha! Tell old Freddy I've got him a live one. Tell him... Something's 
jammed its radio. Look, it's buzzing him like it did me. Joe, dive! Get away from it! Joe, dive! Dive! Ah! Are you Norwood? I didn't expect you so soon. I'm Tom Wilbur, Federal Aviation Agency. My partner, Dick Carey. We found this that has your name on it. It's part of my helmet. Joe was wearing it. We haven't found the body yet, but I'm beginning to think it just disintegrated like the plane. Disintegrated? That's right. I've been investigating crashes for six years, but I've, I've never seen anything like this. Fetri's plane literally came apart in midair, like it was disassembled piece by piece. What was he doing up there, anyway? He was chasing a UFO. You mean this UFO was responsible for Vetri's death? I was responsible. Peters is expecting you, Captain. Go right in. The President's Scientific Advisory Board is handling that end. We'll build a fire under it. I want action, and I mean fast. Get back to me. Mr. Peters, Fred Norwood. Please sit down. Thank you, Captain. And give my regards to your CO. Will do, sir. While flight testing the X-109, you were buzzed by a UFO. Or to be more accurate, you claimed you were. That's right. Your flight control people said it was a mirage, right? You seem to have all the facts there. Was it a uh, mirage, Mr. Norwood? No. Would you take a look at this, please? Did your UFO look anything like that? Very much so, yes, sir. Thank you. Mary, see if you can get the secretary on the scrambler. May I ask you who drew this? A peasant who lives in a remote border village of Red China. Mr. Secretary, Norwood just authenticated our Chinese sketch. Yes, sir. I think this doubles the urgency. Yes, sir. Give me Major Layton. Did you say Red China? Yes. The peasant claimed that that sketch is the likeness of a, a thing hidden in the ruined church near his village. How did it get there? Presumably it landed there. The ruin was roofless. Landed? By whom? The bodies of two uh, creatures were found nearby. Human-like and yet different. The peasant's description wasn't too intelligent. But we assume they died because they lacked immunity to Earth's bacteria. But they must have been oxygen breathers or they wouldn't have ventured from the ship. That's purely conjecture, of course. The remains? The bodies decayed very rapidly, and the peasants cremated what was left.
Major Layton, how are you doing with the ordnance and survival gear? Next week, my foot. We fly out tomorrow. Well, try the Marine Corps. They'll give you fast action. You're sending in a team to investigate. Investigate and destroy. Now, Sam Archibald, our agent in China, did get all of this secondhand. And it could be a hoax. But if it is there, that thing could be so scientifically advanced as to make our technology obsolete. And if the Red Chinese get their hands on it, the free world is obsolete. All this is top secret, isn't it? Obviously. And yet you've told me much more than I need to know. Why? Well, that's obvious, too. You want me to go along? You're not expecting me to fly it. No, no, no. But you've built a career orienting yourself to strange aircraft. You might get some faint notion as to how it operates. Will you go? Hurry up and wait. Will we be much longer, do you think? I don't know, Dave, but griping about it won't help. Ah, well, you forget. I'm an American citizen now, and griping is one of our most cherished constitutional privileges. Yes, sir. You may go in now. Fred, I'd like to have you meet my two favorite geniuses. Jack Garson, electronics wizard, and Dave Ephraim, master metallurgist. Gentlemen, Fred Norwood, the test pilot I told you about. He's just agreed to go with us. Be Norwood. Yes, that's right. I'm Sam Archibald. Welcome to China. Ah, you all right? I think so. Good. 
got all the boxes. And your other two men are down safe. Fill us in, Sam. Well, our objective is about 75 miles due west. A gutted Catholic church. Gutted by the Reds? Yes, about five years ago, and they murdered the priest. The peasants hate the commies for it. So when they found a saucer in the church, the village leader got word to me. And he drew the sketch from memory? Yes. So you haven't seen the saucer? But I believe the man. Sam, what is the strength of the Red Chinese Army in this district? Four companies at Changsha. And the territory between here and our objective is heavily patrolled. Are they likely to find the saucer? Normally, a commie shuns a Catholic church. Besides, they don't even know the saucer exists. Well, you two apparently survived your maiden leap. Oh, no sweat. Piece of cake. Mansangarant, quiet here. Jack Garson, Dave Ephraim, our man in China, Sam Archibald. Oh. Last night. I don't think they're after us, Fred. They got a prisoner. Bombing of peasants who resist the Chinese regime. Poor guy. Routine patrol. Yeah. It was too close for comfort. This is going to be a long, hard journey. I want him to fill the canteens, but he said he's got a sore foot. I'll get another man. Don't bother. Give him all a break. I'll take the stream right down that direction. Fish! Fish! Go 
расстрелю! Где ж ты какой, ну, я ж тебя посмотрю. Нам надо поймать его. Пойдем. Said yet. Russians. Of course. The poor country. How did you attack them? Oh, and they want to arrest us if we don't continue to shoot. They want to arrest us. 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 I know one thing. Any more shooting will attract the Chinese soldiers if it hasn't already. I tried to stop after them. Well, we can't stay pinned down here. Maybe we ought to pull out. It wouldn't help. They run us down easily unless we abandon all of our equipment. Sam, go back and see if we've got any porters left. Okay. Hey, what's that? Americans, don't shoot! We wish to parley with you. Okay, lady, go ahead and parley. Товарищ Карачева, скачите американцам что? Our leader tells me to inform you. Tell your leader to get out here too, or this parley is finished right now. Они хотят, чтобы вы были здесь. What are you Americans doing here? Yes, the was I do. Nasi druzia i sojuzniki, soldati kitajsko socialističko respubliki, to vas rastrelaju. If you are found by our friends and allies, the soldiers of Chinese Socialist Republic, you will be shot. Mi vas umoljajem, vrnut so pratno tuda, od kuda i prišli? We urge you to go back where you come from. И мне сообщим нашим юзникам, что вы тут были. And we will not inform our allies that you were here. I um, shall take your, uh, shall we say, ultimatum under advisement. But I must confer with my comrade, Fred. I recognize one of their guys from pictures in our files. Zagorski, the top metallurgist. Your gun! I had to bring the porters up, or they would have run away. They're scared. I think they're trying to bluff us, but let's find out, hmm? Uh, tell your boss...
comrade. Tell your boss we know you're here on the same mission that we are. We know that you're on the same mission as we are. We know you entered the country without permission and that you're just as afraid of the Chinese Reds as we are. We know that you're on the same mission as we are. в эту страну, и в так же, как и мы, э, бойтесь праздник тайцы. Если это не так, почему же вас сопровождают крестьяны, а не солдаты? Он с ума зашел! Вы очень глупые! Китайцы наши союзники и уничтожат вас. The Chinese are our allies, and they will exterminate you. We wonder you boys let any chance we did. We give you last chance to get away. You must go back where you come from. Иначе мы должны сказать нашим китайским союзникам о вашем присутствии здесь. Otherwise, we must notify our Chinese allies of your presence here. Ask him why he doesn't notify his Chinese allies right now. Закрывайтесь! Forget this ultimatum nonsense. And as much as we both like to shoot each other, we can't afford the racket. So, where do we go from here? This is a good place for breathing. All right, we stop here for a while. Go on, it's it. I, uh, I did some research at Stanford, you know. Metallurgy, of course. Oh, was Professor Wheeler still teaching there? Yes, yes, indeed he was. Who's oh, great Professor Wheeler? Boris Chagorsky. Помните. Cooperati? Da. Drujbi? Nyet. What do you say? Well, uh, he wants uh, to discuss something with me. Excuse me. Delightful fellow, really. All charm. Yeah. I'd love to break up this little shotgun union. Indeed. There's a man with a good idea. Yes. Dubofsky was going to take a shot at us just now. Well, none of us can do that. Well, uh, how about we strangle each other with our bare hands? The important thing is to get to the saucer without drawing a thousand Chinese reds around our necks. After that, we'll play it by ear. I wouldn't mind being strangled by her. She's a commie. Товарищи, помните, дружбы нет. Ну что с тобой? Почему нет дружбы? Мне это не нравится.
Вопросы? From my father. He was in the last war. Well, it wasn't really the last. It was the one we fought together. It came with those trucks we sent you. Oh, of course. Without your American trucks, we could never have won at Stalingrad. Abrosi? Thank you. I bet you have a great IQ. IQ, what's that? Brains. Intelligence. An unusual compliment. Well, I wouldn't dare make the usual one. Though I must say what I saw underneath the waterfall compares favorably with... A... That will be sufficient. See, I told you I couldn't make the usual one. What? What are you doing when you're not taking a shower? I am an electronics expert. My specialty is super heterodyne feedback determinations. Good for you. Oh, I know that you Americans resent women being scientists. Mm. In your bourgeois society, they are nothing but housefrows. There is true sexual equality in Soviet Union. Women are no different from men. Oh, my, that's too bad. Soviet women may even be soldiers. Well, now, you wouldn't happen to be armed now, would you, Sergeant Karachev? Are you not going to search me? Say, are you sure Soviet women are no different than men? Peasants made that roof to hide it from the air. I'll stay here with the porters. They're afraid to go in. Что бы согласили для нас стрелять? Это великое открытие. И что бы работали и эксплуатировали? Как научный тим. Да. 
<laughs> Mr. Peters, you are in command here. That's right. So let's not take any more pictures, shall we? Conrad Dubovsky proposes that we agree to share this great discovery and work together as a scientific team to exploit it. You want to work with us as a team, huh? That's right. Dalsze kasidzie, što pozje može pit u mjeste otkrijete u kemiju miru. Kamrad Dubovski says that later we may announce our discoveries to the world together. Now, just a minute. You tell him I'm concerned about guns, not communiques. On the bottom of our weapons. We talk to the citizens of the aggression. We carry arms only to defend ourselves against aggression. Oh, of course, we know that. But still, I don't like to see people working with guns strapped to their hips. So you tell your boss, if he is willing for us to inspect his arsenal, he can inspect ours, and then we can come to some kind of an understanding. Oni predlagaju inspekciju oružja. Nie, nikakovu inspekciju. No inspection. Mr. Peters. It was I who proposed that we work as team. And I can assure you, I have no intention of working with Gunnar Hill. Nor I, for that matter. What use is gun to scientists? Look. We will put our guns away. You put your guns away. Let only each team leader be out. Then we can work as team. If only you will trust us. I trust you. Hank. We haven't got much choice in the matter. On very fun. You go off to very team. Kamrad Dubovsky is also willing to trust you. Well, I don't trust him. I want everybody to know this. So, let's get to work. Let's read it. Morning, Sam. Morning. I have lookouts at strategic places. We'll keep a night and day watch. Let me give you a hand, Fred. I was uh, just talking to Sam. He's that guard pulling the door around. Good. Should be all right. Wait a minute, I'm coming. I'm going to take a look up there and see. It's heavy now. Let's take it out up there. Hold it. They figure how to get inside this thing yet? Look, the entire exterior surface is completely unbroken. Not a sign of a door, a port, or nothing. How do they look out to see where they're going? Could be like those electric garage doors on some sort of signal. That's Jack. Where is he? He's working on some equations. I'll go get him. Jack, you need it. I heard noise inside. No, that's not inside. That's Jack's electric razor. No, no. Inside. I hear noise now, too. Well, fellas, what can I do for you? I... What the? 
What made it stop? Never mind what made it stop. Why don't we find what made it open? Jack, give me your razor. Oh, what for? Just give it to me. Yeah, sure. This is crazy. No, it isn't. We just happened to hit the right frequency. Ah, ah, no, my no, no, what can you see, Fred? Not very much. It's dark. There's like a tube going up. And a kind of a ladder. Climb up on this. Well, who wants to climb up inside? The one is gonna chef. It is up. Нужно выбрать одного человека, сказать, что стороны, который пойдет. Камрад Zubovsky feels there should be both a Russian and an American to be forced to enter. Now, let's not start a lot of damn protocol. No yeah, protocol. No trust at us, yeah. Comrade Dubovsky insists that such procedures are part of our agreement. All right, all right. You and Fred go in together, then. You got the razor, Fred? Thanks. like solid metal from the outside. From in here, it's transparent. It must be some kind of plastic. <laughs> he can't see us, but we can see him. <gasps> Pretty good visibility from all sides. Where are the gravity couches? How will they strap in? Obviously, they do not. There can be only one explanation. Because no amount of strapping down could combat intense speed and quick directional changes you have described. Under power, this craft must generate its own inner gravitational field that counteracts and equalizes all G-forces. What's that current of air? That's like a draft. I think it is life support system. Not unlike those of our cosmonauts. I noticed it began the moment we entered. It must be automatically activated by the carbon dioxide we, we exhale, converting the CO2 into ozone or some other oxygen-based gas. Well, you might be right. When I was in Washington, they said they probably were oxygen breathers. That's why they came out of the ship. Should we get the others? Right. The door is closed. Well, I'll open it. I could send this back to the factory. Shut the door! What? The frequency level of 
laser and probably activate the gravitational field. If we cannot adjust it properly, we will be squashed like bugs. It's creating magnetic force. Does it look like a panel that might control the gravitational field? I don't know. I don't know. Don't say that. We've got to take a chance. And it better be a calculated risk. This could be a relay. The kind that opens and closes electric circuits. I can hardly stand up. Oh, no, I, but I am not sure. I only say it looks a little like it. Then I try it. Shot in the dark. We were lucky. We also found out what regulates the gravitational field. There must be there must be similar circuit to open door and floor. Logically, would it not be located? Somewhere where you could reach it while standing near door. It's a simple electric guy. How come we didn't see it before? First aid kit, why? A sick Chinese baby. Well, none of us would know what to do. We're not doctors. This goddess chef will do it. Don't you think you better read the instructions? Thank you, that will not be necessary. at him now. It's wonderful. Oh. <laughs> 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 Sam, tell her to bring baby back immediately if he seems worse. Don't tell me, along with all your other talents, you're a doctor, too. Oh, no. No. 
I wanted to study medicine. But the year I started school, the quota was unfilled for electronics majors. So, the Commissar of Education decided otherwise. You just did what they told you? Of course. The state must decide these things. Just like that, huh? You are angry with me. Tavarish Karacheva. Помните, не будет никакого братства. Камрад Дубовский says that there will be no fraternization. Oh yeah? Well, what do you say? Камрад Дубовский is in charge of our mission. Gemini, Sputnik! Figured it all out yet? Hmm? Have you figured it all out yet? Oh, 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 sure, Fred. It's very simple. Oh. <laughs> One thing seems certain. This craft is repelled or attracted by universal lines of magnetic force. That is simple, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's very, very simple. The only problem is, so am I. <laughs> well, Fred, what Anna means is, for example, if it wants to go up, it fastens on to the magnetic attraction of, well, say, the sun. If the sun is at its zenith, or any other star that's in that position of the heavens at that time of day. Now, to go down, well, it just utilizes the Earth's magnetism and so on. Well, what about a horizontal flight? Then it just beams onto the magnetic attraction of any star or planet that's on or near the horizon. Oh, believe me, there are billions of possible lines of magnetism. And why wouldn't it pull this ship from every direction at once? Aha! That is secret of its circuitry. These controls, properly adjusted, block out all magnetic attractions except the one pilot wishes to utilize. And this craft is run by magnetism. And that's all. All! If we could utilize this principle, we could exploit literally limitless fields of energy. We could irrigate deserts, desalt oceans, increase production of food, of everything, 100-fold. We could also manufacture one hell of a super weapon. What would the world want with weapons? If every country was rich and prosperous. Ah, true, Dave. Well, what do you say we break for chow, huh? Chow? Chow. Chow is dog. <laughs> oh, uh, may I precede you, madam? Dog. Dog. You will be the dog for lunch. Just be my like guest. to save me. Oh, no, I tripped over my own feet. Ah. Oh. It's broken. Oh, great.
है trying to fly it. What the devil's going on here? Church the voice. Shut up, Jeff. You have to go, God, you're going to let you. Why, what's he say? God, you're going to try to fly it. I knew we couldn't trust your people. Get him out of there. How? Right. Take it easy. What's the matter with you? His feet hurt. He has steel cups. Коряков умер как герой Советского Союза. Come on, they don't want us at a time like this. Oh, you go ahead, Dave. I'll be alone a little while. Похоронили. Мы больше ничего не можем сделать. Пойдем. Pray for him with me. But I think he would not have done it unless Comrade Dubovsky ordered him. to ask permission of Comrade Dubovsky.
No. You forget, Fred, that we're not here to share knowledge with them. We're here to get a monopoly. If possible. A monopoly that would make our military position invincible. Now, why can't you attempt to take off with Jack? Oh, Hank, believe me, those controls are too much for a one-handed man. I could kill us both. You saw what happened to Gadjikov. He's right. I believe he had his hands so full that he couldn't monitor the inner gravitational field, and it, it built up and crushed him. Dave could handle that. I'm the foggiest, old boy. I'm a metallurgist, remember? You haven't a choice. You've got to go with a girl. Okay. Mr. Peters. Yes? Comrade Dubotsky accepts proposal made by Comrade Norwood last night. That Anna and he attempt lift off together. Sure. Without a pilot, he's got no alternative. Neither do we. Hank, if they're willing, why shouldn't we be? All right. Let's get on with it. Good luck, Fred. And don't try any more than just a short lift off. I wasn't planning any acrobatics. United in this Russian-American project, guns are not longer necessary. Wrong, Sam? Red patrols in the area have been very heavy this morning. More so than usual? Yes. Он говорит, что есть много красных патрулей в этом районе сегодня утром. They've become aware of a kind of a suppressed excitement in the village. Their suspicions are aroused. Заметили возбуждение в селе. Они, кажется, сомневаются. Could they have heard the sound of the saucer? No. Or my guards would have heard it too. We better get back out.
的小孩好得多了，我很谢谢你帮我的忙，很好。It's good, no? <笑>对，我送给你的。谢谢你。You specialists in your high exorbitant prices. <laughs> this is a beautiful place. You're a beautiful person. Что вы будете делать? Zagorsky has translated your trusted leader's intentions. He says, Fred, that you and Anna will fly the saucer to Moscow or he'll kill us all. Tell him he's crazy. Anton? Your scientific comrade has explained that our murder would distress him greatly. Anna! Yes, just sorry, it is up! Yet! Anna! Go on over to him. He'll kill you. No, he will not. Grazie a tutti. I ought to shoot your treacherous head off. Tu raki, a ne bada se va tu te bia spriat in rujo. What's he saying? That you tricked him by hiding pistol. Oh, my God, that's wonderful coming from you. Tell him to protest the United Nations. Now move! Uninas Ubiut? He wants to know if you are going to kill us. You're not getting your information back to Moscow, that's for sure. How do you mean that, Hank? We do what we have to do. We take him out as prisoners. But if that's impractical... Oh my God, Hank, you're beginning to sound like Dubovsky. If you mean because he's loyal to his side and I'm loyal to mine... I mean you keep wanting to blow each other up. Fred, what the hell side are you on? On the side of survival. Who's the gain if we exterminate each other? I'll tell you who's the gain. The Red Chinese, that's who. Your little war has attracted a Red Patrol. Keep your eye on that wild man. Stop on Skazal. Kitaiske Krasne Soldata. Looks like they're just reconnoitering. I suspect he's radioing for reinforcements. There's a whole company in the village. How long will it take him to get here? Not very long. It's only a few miles. Keep an eye on him, sir. Okay. Only eight, but it looks like they're radioing for reinforcements. Krasni, Kitaichi, Nidol, Shnito, Stata Reku. Nam Nado, Nitsu, Toshut, Yeyo. 
He said to destroy saucer to keep from Chinese. Tell him to shut up and stay in his own corner. But he's right. The problem is... And you too, Zagorski. Just shut up. Hank, he's one of the great physicists of the world. He just wants to help us. We don't need him. The hell we don't. Hank, we all need each other. You saw what just happened. But Zagorski and Anna had no part of it. As I was about to say, problem is that Sosa is practically indestructible. I can care. It would take extreme heat. Something like a hydrogen explosion, for instance, to, to melt that metal. But this is the world sitting here. We can't just leave it to the Chinese Reds. We are in complete accord on that. Perhaps we do not have to leave it. What do you mean? Fly it. Fly it? Can you? We had it off the ground before. It's too intricate. There are a thousand things to learn. I have this. Jack, please check my figures. Что is just solo? Может пит разняет как летает тарелка. This is an analysis of the working of the controls based on mathematical probabilities. Do you think my calculations are correct? Well, we can't tell without testing them, Anna, but... Well, then get going. The rest of us will see you airborne and then try to get out of here. If we get airborne. Oh, now, look, it isn't that simple. All this has to be checked out. I'd say it'll take us about a half hour to run through it. Dave, give us a hand up. Anna, come on, I'll give you all the help I can. What's going on here? He told her to fly to Moscow. Fred, you got to fly to the nearest American air base, Formosa. They're coming. A whole company of them. We got to get out there and stop them. For at least 30 minutes. Hank! Hank. Jack has to stay with the saucer. So do you. That's my point. You need Dabovsky and Zagorsky. Eagle and Bear will join forces to destroy Drago. Prediction made by French stargazer who lived 400 years ago, Nostradamus. They're against the Red Chinese getting the saucer as much as we are. Absolutely, <laughs> Until you see the whites of their eyes. <laughs> Waterloo! There's, I hope. Remark! We actually stopped them! Yeah. Only now they know our position and strength. It won't be so easy next time. I've run out of grenades. Uh, can you spare any? Well, 
I've only got two. But then I want back to church. Oh, I'll get back and get some. No. Let me. I'm of least use here. All right, but keep down. He's hit! Well, sir. Eight. Eight, sir. Four. We stop them, comrade. Oh, grenades. Grenades. What are you doing here? You need these, don't you? To hell with those. What good are they if there's no one to fly that thing out? You're not expendable here. Soldati. Yeah, they're coming at us from both the front and right flanks. It'll be hard stopping them this time. Hank, we're set to take off our yell. Then you fall back as fast as you can and join us. If we can. We'll cover you. Get going, but keep low. You and Sam crawl out on the right flank. If you can surprise them, you might stop those flankers. We'll give it a go, old boy. You're a jolly optimist. Luck. Cheers. Get at it. Dave? Everybody. Come on. Hey, 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 hey,
Put us on automatic pilot. The ship is running away with us. Reset to hover. Ready? Ready. No. Nothing. It does not respond as before. We've torn free of Earth's gravity and traveled thousands of miles. Look, the moon. How could we have come so far in such a short time? Because this ship is approaching speed of light. Over 11 million miles per minute. Automatic pilot, still locked to a preset course. Yeah, being drawn to some magnetic attraction. Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, maybe even some distant star many light years beyond our solar system. There is a whole bunch of circles here we know little about. Dozens of them, with infinite variety of combinations. And only one should reactivate manual control. Yeah, but which? All we can do is try each one, and that could take weeks. If we are heading for star, the nearest one, Alpha Centauri, even at this speed, it will take us four years to get there. If we are heading for a planet of our solar system, then we will crash into it very soon. If it's an outer planet, Pluto, Uranus, we still have a few hours. But if it's Mars, our time's already up. It's not Mars. The red planet. We'll bypass it by a million miles or so. Honor. I'm going to start running through those circuit combinations by trial and error. It would take too long. Not if you can eliminate some of the permutations mathematically. If only we had computer. I will try. Good. In the meantime, I'll run as many combinations as possible. Gravitational field.
Jack. Saturn. Hmm. I've been observing it for the past ten minutes. We're in a dead collision course. Not collision. The weight of Saturn's atmospheres are so immense that long before we hit anything solid, this ship will be crushed and compressed to the size of a baseball. Fred, our time has run out. Run out. You collide? Yes. I have reduced problem to four circuits. Numbers 4, 16, 22, and 51. But they must be activated in proper sequence, and I do not know which sequence. Well, there are 24 different possibilities. Well, let's try all of them. They must work systematically. Sequence 1. Open circuits 4, 16, 22, 51 in that order. 4, 16, 22, 51. All circuits closed. 4, 16, 51, 22. 4, 51, 22, 16. We'll never make it. Keep going. 16, 22, 4, 51. Sixteen, twenty-two, fifty-one, four. We're back on manual. Hitting the atmosphere in just a few seconds. I don't know how much heat this craft will stand. Better start decelerating. On it. Ready? Ready. Now. Something's wrong. We're losing power. We should lose power, shouldn't we? Not like this. Recheck those circuits, quick. Right. Fred and I were thinking we'd like to try for a landing at Geneva. Both our countries have... I will have to meet them face to face one day. All the nations of this earth better be ready to stand together.
Amen. <laughs>